Faith can move mountain. Radio Maria 91.3 FM. The voice of truth. Hello there. Good evening. Once again, it's Child Protection on 91.3 FM Radio Maria. The voice of truth. Today, we're looking at a wonderful topic. Mrs. Momo Mary Angela is the presenter, as usual, the child advocate. We're talking today about safeguarding. What is safeguarding? Last week, we tried to look at the continuation of the effective things we need to do, protecting our children. All of this will come together to form what we call child protection. Safeguarding is promoting the welfare of children and ensuring that they are not maltreated, that they are not impaired in terms of health, neglect, and all of those things that will affect them in accommodation, in their dressing, in the social and cultural um, environment. We are also talking about ensuring that these children grow up not just in the right environment, but that whatever thing is good for them is consistent, we follow up on them until finally we say, yes, this one is old enough to be independent. Even at that, we still have what we call, what? Parenting adult children. So having looked at the effective factors of parenting, we are talking about safeguarding now because schools are resuming. And it's possible some teachers have not been listening to this program or have not had the opportunity to be on air or probably not around Abuja or FCT while we had been talking about the different activities, you know, to protect these children during the holiday. We're looking at safeguarding because the issues around the protection of our children have, no, have become very, very, will I call it now, like, is a siege. They have become everywhere, not just outside, but inside the house. The home that is meant to be protecting them is no longer a home, but a house of horror. So there's need for us to talk about safeguarding. So we know that this particular assignment, responsibility, is not just for only the people in the house or the home, but also the people outside the home. It is a call, a clarion call for everybody to be out for the protection of our children. Don't go away. We'll be coming right back to talk about it. Thank you so much for staying tuned. And if you're tuning in for the first time, this is Child Protection on 91.3 FM Radio Maria, the voice of truth. And with you, as usual, is Madam Momo Miriangela. I'm here to present the truth about protecting our children. We are talking about the justice, fairness we need to put forward so these wonderful gifts from God, who did not ask to be born, we brought them from our action, whether sexually, whether by adoption, or we are caring for them, as whether biologically. Once they are together right there before you as the caregiver, you're the, the mother, father, you're an uncle, you're the teacher, school, church, mosque, wherever, once they are under our care, we are here to tell you that these children have rights and these rights must be taught them. We must let them know their rights and teach them how to stand up for their rights. 
and be there also for them to protect their rights. We also will talk about, and we always talk about here, the need to keep the environment safe for them. Make it as conducive as possible. Make sure they're secure. Make sure it's friendly. Make sure it's enabling that they can get motivated enough to give us the best of their potentials. Because like we say, they are all endowed with one talent, one gift, or the other. And then some of them have been robbed of these rights. Some of them have been preyed upon. Some of them have been abused. And if they have been abused, what do we do to them? Cast them away, call them names. It's because of the way you dressed or it's because the mother left him outside or inside. If the child is exposed, of course, protect the child. Cherish the child and save the child. It's not a time for you to take advantage of the child. So we're saying that for those of them that are already victims of abuse, we don't stigmatize them. We don't call them names. We don't discriminate against them. We're not ashamed of them to go and dump them somewhere or talk them away. In some families, they won't give them a name, send them to the pastor or whatever, call them all manners of names, and they look, look for one reason or the other to traffic them or send them away completely. That is child abuse. So if we have to talk about child abuse, we also have to talk about the fact that there is need to safeguard these children. It's about time for us to start knowing that these children are not just our children anymore, that the government is interested. The neighborhood, of course, is interested. The church is interested. The mosques are interested. Name it. Eyes, all eyes now are on children and how you relate with them. So looking at safeguarding, we're saying that we're looking at the fact that we will now promote the welfare of the children as a corporate body. So it's not a case of Nami uh, Bonam, as I like, Agoduam. <laughs> Dear, the story has changed. Have you heard about the VAP Act? The, that's telling you that violence against persons now is prohibited. But you want to talk about the Child's Rights Act and that has laid down the different sanctions that go with child abuse. Or even the, 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 the law itself, even before now, did not throw its face away completely, you know, from the care of children. So it's no longer business as usual. So on safeguarding, we're saying we're going to be ensuring that these children are not maltreated in any form. We're going to make sure that we do not leave them to hazardous life, where they are held to be, you know, in trouble, where they, they are education will be neglected where they are not properly accommodated even if you went to bring them from somewhere to help your own children they have a right to also have proper care as it were we're also talking about situations where whatever good thing you're doing or you're supposed to do is not just for the public it has to be consistent both in hiding and in open that these children must be well cared for that everything they need in terms of provision uh, or keeping them safe must be effectively given to them and must be consistent. So if we're saying all that, that we have to take care of them, we have to ensure that actions we take are to enable them, give us their best and be the best that they are because we know, we're saying it already, online, everywhere, on air, in the news, the wonderful gifts our Nigerian children are displaying, the talents, the laurels they are winning out there and even from inside. Because when we say, okay, the, the, the ones abroad are doing great. The one that became the, or that is still is the best mathematician in the world was born, bred, trained, taught in Nigeria, yet she is ruling the world. So all of these we have to look out for. Then what do we need to know? What do we need to know to be there and say we are practicing this safeguarding of our children? We always, we must always act in the best interest of the children. Whatever we are doing must be child-centered. It must be child-centered. 
we must ensure that it is for the good of these children. And as we're doing that, even as we're monitoring them, as we're helping, whatever we're doing to them, we must never tell them that if you, if you tell me that you're doing this thing, I will not say it to anybody. Because you sure would say it to somebody. But it is not to any and everybody, but to people that will take the right action to ensure that they get justice or that they are well protected. Because by the time you tell them, this you're telling me in confidence, I won't share with anybody, and eventually they find out that somebody's talking about it, they would have lost your confidence, and uh, they will lose confidence in you, and they will never open up again. Then, we also have to know how to identify children who will need our attention, who will need to benefit from help we have to give. In case a child has been abused, what do you do? In case a child has been abused and is not speaking up, what do you do? In case a child is undergoing some kind of, even personal abuse, some of them abuse themselves, what do you do? How do you go about it? You have to be knowledgeable. You have to know how to read body language. You have to know when they are not talking, when they are withdrawn, when they are talking too much, when they are overreacting, when they are getting too touchy, when they are getting too close to somebody, when they are doing those things that betray the inner feeling, whether harm caused by themselves to themselves or harm caused by somebody else, whether a teacher, a sibling, uh, you know, a religious leader, some friends out there, the, the ones on the street, the ones in school, wherever, you should be able to know that this child has resumed today, Monday, and is this child is not looking settled, is not looking good enough, is not looking happy, or is too excited, or is too withdrawn. There must be something more, you know, to, to know. You have to know how to go about it, to know how to help this child benefit from whatever observation you have noticed. And it is important that you do it professionally. You, you also have to know the different types of abuses. We have spoken here, times without, num without number. I keep taking it over and over again because I feel that some people, you know, tuning in for the first time may not know. You, you, you don't give what you don't have. So if you don't even know what the different types of abuses are, you may be abusing a child and you may not even know that it's child abuse. You may take it that, ah, me, I can't take it from my children. Of course, you become that rigid parent that instead of the children talking to, they will either write, they will rather go and you know, take their lives or they will confide in some other person that will further abuse them. And you're telling yourself, because I am this kind of parent, I am strict, I'm hard. At the same time, you're not also going to be the laissez-faire attitude uh, parent because you have to also know that there are times where you put your feet down and say, this time I say no, we're going this way and not the other way. I'm saying no, by 10 p.m. you must go to bed because as early as 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, we are up again running. You have to know the different types of abuse. What are the different types of abuse? We can't get tired of talking about it. We're looking at here the physical abuse, where you batter the child at the slightest thing. You have hit the child. You have you know, used something to hurt the child. You have kicked. You have slapped and all of that. In short, I gave you three strokes of the cane and you repeated this. You're taking 12 strokes this time and taking it all over your body. I'm flogging you with anything I have, my belt, my that. That's physical abuse. The next we can talk about is emotional abuse, where you're giving the child names. Never do well. Oludo. I don't even know how you got into my womb. In short, I don't know how your mother gave birth to you and said, in short, are you sure you are my child? In short, I will, I will make sure that I, you, I keep you miserable in this house. 
and then the teacher in school is calling names. Yeah, yeah, you keep quiet. If others are talking, should you? Uh, which question? Don't ask me any question there. I told you to write in five minutes, and it's eight minutes you are still writing, and then you take your cane and start. You don't even know that child has special need. You've not been able to observe that that child might be a special need child that needs special attention that is slow on that particular aptitude and has some great talent on another attitude, on another uh, um, concept or skill or talent. And then you are crushing and grinding him to powder because this particular one here, he's not excelling. By the time you finish name calling and all that, the child is withdrawn. I had a case yesterday, I counseled somebody who for years, has been living with the harm caused her in the secondary school. And after filling out the form, a litany of what she was going through, she has inferiority complex, anxiety, name them. She just was writing them. Low self-esteem, no self-confidence, because her seniors in school had called her all manners of names just to intimidate her into submission. Her teachers may not have known. She didn't have the confidence to report, but somebody was not doing his or her job somewhere, including the parents, because the child all of a sudden started withdrawing and started keeping to herself. And then she, according to her, she was telling me yesterday that she felt that she's one of the ugliest human beings that has ever existed. Meanwhile, when this girl, when I got her to you know, the point where she could smile, she had a beautiful smile. Beautiful girl. The French will call me on. Yes, uh, we're Africans, yes. Her nose is not uh, the Uyibu nose. Does not mean that she's ugly. And people may have told her, look at your nose, like uh, flat, like mat. And they, would have, they must have told her, look at you, flat, flat uh, uh, waist. Excuse me. I saw a lot of beautiful things about the girl. And you know, she sings like a nightingale. But people had stripped her of self-confidence, of self-value. self, self uh, um, value, And she was not seeing anything good about herself. And already depression is creeping in, if it has not already crept in. So we must know the things to do to keep these children safe. Now it's resumption time. Are we telling our children, our teachers, are we telling our teachers the different forms of type child abuse? We've talked about physical, we've talked about emotional, name calling, starvation, making sure that the child stays, you know, unhappy. You you bring the child, you want to show the child that you are the authority. Of course you are. You don't need to carry a rod, according to them, to spare the, the rod and spoil the child. Then you go to the welder and go and carry a rod and start breaking the child's bones, right, and, right, left, and center. Is that the rod? Remember what we said, is a rod of correction. Sanction the child, even by men looking at a child. If you, if you bring your children to be sensitive and react to your, your countenance, your moods, they will, they will Take that even as sanction. Mom is not smiling again. No. You hear them, ah, daddy, the way daddy entered now, daddy didn't just smile at all. You sure the way mommy pissed right now, something is happening. Everybody, arrange yourselves. They are not waiting for the king. Those ones are not waiting for you to carry that rod, 19 inches rod or whatever rod, to come and break their bones and dislocate everywhere. And some will feel that until I flog the child, the child will not behave. Then you got it all wrong. And then you have to talk about troubleshooting and also the damage control. Because you, there were things you didn't do right from the beginning when the child was born. Then we say that staff members, true, they may notice some forms of abuse and may want to go straight to the, the authorities' concern. But you must not also look away from the designated head, head of your school. Even if the designated head of your school is the abuser, and you would have made your report to a higher authority, 
still let that head know that you've made an abuse, you've made a report. Yes, you will say, I will lose my job. Is it not better to really lose your job than lose a child? Will God not open another door for you? When one door closes, will another do do door not open? And the parents of that child that you have also seen through, you think they will not be grateful and this child you're looking at now will not be somewhere, some, somewhere tomorrow to say, God bless this teacher. And even if they don't even appreciate, one good thing is that posterity has it down for you, that you've done something wonderful. Talking about abuse, we say there is also child neglect. Education, you owe the children. Here in Nigeria is from the crash, compulsorily from primary one to primary six. Some schools are now doing primary five. And then from JS1 to JS3, every child must have a JS3 certificate, whether all pass or all A's, JS3 is the compulsory education level for every Nigerian child. Then talking about the care of the child at home, is the child warm? Is the child well cared for? What are you doing about the child's health? Immunization, God bless all of the, the health body, right from the Minister of Health to UNICEF to World Health Organization, down to our great nurses that just you know, came on, on uh, stage a while ago. They are doing great jobs there. Vaccination for children, to the best of my knowledge, is free. Are you available to ensure that your children are vaccinated? And they even come to schools, too, to give these vaccines to children. What about back home? The child is talking about headache, pains, and so on. You go give Panadol. You give that. And by the next day, if the child is not getting better, you look for something that is higher than Panadol. You bring Panadol extra. Instead of making sure the child sees a doctor, there are centers, medical centers around FCT. You have no excuse. The general hospital or central hospital is there. You have no excuse. In in Delta State, from zero to zero age uh, to to five, m medical uh, uh, attention is free. So you don't have an excuse why your child should not be properly diagnosed, cared for medically, and why you should stop abusing children's uh, 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 health by giving wrong drugs. Then we've talked about medical, or rather we've talked about medical, we've talked about physical, we've talked about sexual abuse, no emotional abuse. What about sexual abuse? There's what they call sexual abuse. That's usually people commonly take as abuse. When you say, ah, this child was abused, they say, ah, oh, hey, they must have, hey, hey, they must have raped the child. No. You've heard, that's why it's said to talk about other forms of abuses before talking about the sexual abuse. An abused child is not just that the child has been abused sexually. Talking about sexual abuse, good for us to remember here that we have the group that are pedophiles, those people that are specializing in abusing children, babies, within the ages zero to maybe five, six, seven, eight. And then we have the ones that abuse children, you know, because a child here, the definition of a child here is any child that is below the age of 18. So having any sexual or carnal knowledge of such a child is sexual abuse. Inducing the child, showing the child films and uh, pawns that will trigger arousal in the child is sexual abuse. Even the way you conduct yourself around the child could be sexual abuse. Are you exposing yourself to this child in such a way and asking the child for special kind of, some kind of touches? It's sexual abuse. Are you invading the child's privacy? Because right from KG now, God bless these great schools and teachers and parents you know, back home, they, they are telling the children already what their public parts are and what their private parts are. So if you go beyond their private parts, their public parts and invade their, their private parts, that, that's sexual abuse. You're abusing them. No matter what you use, no matter what you ask them to, to do to you. And right here, we talked about the importance 
of keeping these children safe, safeguarding. When we begin to arouse them and get them to begin to release that hormone that is supposed to be the blessed hormone that will make a properly married man and woman have the right atmosphere for conception and childbirth and will begin to sing and praise God that a new baby is born. You begin to get a child to release that prematurely, you are destroying the child. Because it's working positive in the elderly, rather in the mature people, and it's negative in these child, children that are under age. So our teachers need to know all this. At resumption, there has to be an orientation specifically for safeguarding. There has to be a handbook specifically for safeguarding. There has to be one-on-one -on -one con uh, counseling. And you also must know around as a head of school, head of teach, um, head teacher, counselor, to know those new teachers that are coming in because most people don't bother to go to Women Affairs to report so that that uh, book on sexual gender-based violence register would be updated. So they don't even have names of those who are abusing children as much as they should have because it's supposed to be updated and, and sent as soon as it is done. How many people bother to do that? So you as a teacher, head teacher, you as the, the, the counselor, you as the elderly teachers around, because I'm just using this word elderly, I've seen many people come with 40-year-old, 50-year-old uh, people, teachers, making advances at children. Of course, we're talking about pedophiles here. But whoever cares to be part of it needs to be, because the truth is that when it is time for us to come after you for bringing a child's life into danger by any means. You that heard about it and did not tell, and the person that committed the crime, you are equally guilty. Go and read the VAP Act very well. Take all the penal codes, all the different legal papers you need to hear and read about to see that child abuse has gone beyond what we used to know it to be. And that when you abuse a child, the child has a right to talk about it 20 years after, 30 years after. So even if the child lives with pa parents that are careless or ignorant, or they are with caregivers who were ignorant, or teachers who didn't know innocently, sometime that child can come around to say, now is justice time. Let's talk about this. We're going to continue on this topic. Don't go away because we'll be calling out the numbers so you'll be part of this program and give us your opinion. Bye bye. <laughs> Welcome back to 91.3 FM Radio Maria, the voice of truth. If you're just tuning in, this is Child Protection, and it is Madam Momo Mariangela presenting. Please, I would want you to just pick up your phone and start calling in on 0700-123-7990. I'll take it again. Zero seven zero zero one two three nine seven nine sorry nine zero. The second one is zero seven zero zero one two three seven nine nine one. I'll take it again. Seven zero zero. Zero seven zero zero one two three seven nine nine one. 
0700123 and the third one is 0700123 series 022 zero seven zero zero one two three seven nine nine two again we are talking about safeguarding in schools we say it's about resumption time and hello 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 uh, good, evening. good evening sir is, is it radio maria? yes it's radio maria 91.3 okay. thank you where are you calling uh, from? Name, yeah. I'm, I'm coming from Guarimpa. My okay. name is Mr. Lawrence Brady. Welcome, Mr. Lawrence. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm asking about the children as you are. I follow the program. Okay. I'm very happy to hear from you people advising us on these children. Okay. Child abuse. Okay. And I want to ask if okay. you have a child mm -hmm. with a daughter, yes. a woman, mm. and a woman don't want your, your, your child to come closer to you. Mm. Is it a man's fault or is it a woman's fault? Okay. We, this, this answer now, for me to say, give a portion blame here is not going to be right because I have not known why the woman is doing it and I have not heard from the woman. But naturally, a child should be close to mom and dad. Do you live together in the same house? Okay, so we're talking about safeguarding. Uh, we've lost that number. I will get back. Maybe he will be able to get back. We're looking at safeguarding here, and we're trying to say that it is a collective effort. We cannot stand by ourselves to say it is just the mom and dad, or it's just the school, or it's just the religious uh, bodies that should take care of the children, or the society that is already, you know, What's happening right now in society? You want to talk about the internet and all of those? Hello? Okay, we missed that call. Hello? I, Hello? It's breaking. Seriously, I can't hear you. Could you hang up and try to call again? So you, we, we're, we're talking about the fact that it is a joint responsibility. And it's even more complicated now that you do not hear and not act. Because if for any reason the, the, the child gets to a law court and it's proven that you were, you were told and you didn't do anything, you are liable. We must all be in it. We must ensure that our children are kept safe. Hello? 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 Yeah, good evening. Good evening, ma. Yes. Thanks for calling in. Thank what, you, ma. Yes, let's know your name and where you're calling from and make your contribution. That is gone Hello? again. Hello? Uh, okay. Uh, Lawrence is calling back. Okay, look, Mr. Lawrence, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I was uh, talking, I, I was saying that I need to know where. You know why the woman is behaving that way okay you, you don't live together okay but you want to get you want to get close to your children so yeah so the, yeah, one daughter oh, that's a lot yeah so you you you're going to make sure you see because of these children at times we fend harmony we pretend to be in harmony so we can we can, re we can retain the love and attention of our children. There are the sacrifices you make to have access to your child. You, you, can't be, you cannot be in discord and expect the woman to push the child to you. She might even want to, uh, to her, she's probably trying to punish you or, or take, you know, get even by keeping back the child. So you people have turned the child to the grass that is suffering. Two elephants are fighting on the grass, you know, is suffering. And just as I was saying here, that everything we do, once we start bringing them to life, we them, everything we do becomes child-centered. It has to be in their interests. 
even if we are fighting, even if we are separated, whatever, if we are divorced, there has to be an agreement, there has to be a meeting point so that these children will not be the ones to bear the brunt of what they didn't cause. So please try to see how you can come, you know, get some midway so that you can also have access to your daughter because the daughter needs both father and mother. But where either of the parents is toxic or is not going to be a good example or is going to have some form of threat to the child's welfare, of course, even the court will separate that child from such a parent. I don't know whether that will help you. So go ahead and try to make sure that you get close to your wife, you discuss it and have that child so you can also enjoy the presence of your child. Thank you very much for calling in. So as we're saying well, that it is everybody's responsibility. And today I am directing my talk more to school heads, whether primary, whether creche, whether university, whatever. Now that we have resumed, whatever you've been doing before is not going to be exactly what you're going to do now. There's something you must add, and that is safeguarding. By the grace of God, talking with the Ministry of Education and all that, they're going to come up with some form of, I won't call them policies, but demands on you as year heads, as school heads, as pre school presidents, school owners, to bring out your safeguarding paper lists and ensure that you have these seminars. Some of us, when you're able to contact us, it's possible for us to do these seminars and workshops. But on your own too, you can basically make sure that you have written them out, you've talked about them, and you have told them what it takes to you know, fall into this trap, how they have to resist it. And I must mention here that please take note that legally, whether it is the minor making the advance and you are now, uh, that is, let's say, the, the, the situation where the minor is making the advance and you are allowing yourself to fall into it, the minor is not the one to suffer, but you. So, Report any case that looks like it. A, a, a teacher was telling me how he had to run to the principal, virtually ran out of you know a situation where he found himself that this little girl was on like trying to push his, her, her balls on, on, on him. And they were just two. So there's no other person there that would testify that, ah, it's not the teacher that did it. It's uh, uh, the girl that did it. She, he ran away and ran straight to the head teacher's office to say, Ma, I just experienced this. It was, my, my lesson was before break, and immediately the bell went. Others had run out to go and get their snacks and so on. This particular one was trying to show this to me and see what she did. And somebody else now went behind to let to call the girl to say, why were you doing this, this, that, that? They say, I, I like him now. Maybe if they had brought both of them together at once, she would have said, no, I didn't do it. So you have to be careful. You must not accept and you must not initiate. You don't initiate because you are trying, go and read, oh, go to Google and check. Go to Nigeria and find out from any lawyer around you to know what the VAP Act says. We've done, I did that, that expose here. I talked about the VAP Act. I talked about the VAP Act. I got a lawyer to talk about uh, um, the Child's Rights Act. Another lawyer talked on penal code concerning children, child protection, safeguarding. The story is not what it used to be, like I'm saying. It's not a threat. I'm only telling us for our own good that we must keep these children safe. We must ensure also that we help them because that child that was behaving abnormally can grow up to become a very disciplined child tomorrow if properly handled, if properly counseled, if you begin to know where it started from, who introduced her into that, what can be done about it, why she should not do it, why she has to stay and wait for the right time, that child can be salvaged. It's not a time for you to start shouting around the school. Crucify her, crucify her. She, she, she was pushing her balls on me. It's something that you, the, the head teacher and the counselor should talk about. And then you bring in the parents of the child. Because some of them also get very, very 
nasty when you expose some of these things and you say, I've been known for this. What is there? Let me just go haywire. And we're supposed to be there to help them. We are not here to destroy them. We're not for name calling. We're not for discrimination. We're not for stigmatization. We don't want to mess them up. Because as a matter of fact, you find out somewhere going a little deeper, you find out that some adult somewhere did not also do his or her work for her to pick those habits and now be, she, uh, be craving for it. Somebody, somebody somewhere did not do his work. That's why I said it is a joint responsibility from the home to the church, to the school, to the society, everybody. All hands on deck for safeguarding. It is very important. Churches, gather your, your uh, um, clergy together. Gather everybody working for you and ensure that you come up with safeguarding rules. I, am, I think I'm proud of Abuja Act Diocese because they have that in place already and they are doing a lot, you know, trying to reach out to their different workers to ensure that everybody, you know, if you were not aware before, now we are doing awareness and sensitization. A, a very great committee is in place for that. Documents are going out, people are already reading to know that this is my limit, this is where I must not, this, these are my, you know, you have territories, you have boundaries, you have where you can act and where you cannot act. So I'm asking everybody to emulate that. Have you set up your own safeguarding committee? Have you brought out your own documents? Have you given them, made them available for your teachers to read, your workers, both academic and non-academic, from crash to the university? It is a clarion call. We have to do it. We have to bring out our safeguarding committee, documents, awareness, sensitization, and follow up. We follow up on it. Because we've li we know we've, we've, we've been living in the wild for so long. But the time has come for us to sit up, to say, now there is awareness. Ignorance is not an excuse. Ignorance is not an excuse. And if you were ignorant, now you're hearing about it. And as you're hearing about it, please spread it. Spread it. Spread the news. Tell somebody on Radio Maria today, this was discussed. Let's talk about it. Beyond listening to it, don't keep it to yourself and just keep yourself safe. Save your colleague. Protect our children. Because there are families that don't even... That don't, I've talked about dysfunctional families here before with some guests. Some children are saved only when they even come to school. They learn anything about it you know, that is good for their lives. Some parents ha have become so busy, running after money, running after career, and they have left the basic responsibility of child, of safeguarding and child protection, of taking care of the children they brought forth. Some don't even know, don't even have the, they have no knowledge whatsoever. That's why at times you see me, I go to areas that are very difficult to assess. I have gone on the body of water. I've, I've had to use a microphone sitting in a canoe, talking in, in the water, in the riverine areas. Yes, collaborating with churches, collaborating with women, market women. I've gone to markets to talk because it is something that we must talk about. We need to know about it. We need to hear it. And that's why I'm so grateful to Radio Maria for creating this avenue on child protection for everybody to hear. I pray that more stations, you know, will have access and begin to talk about it. We need to talk about it on air, on radio, on TV. I'm, I am there on Facebook. I'm on there talking about it. Talk with that's my, my the, the Society for Abuse Minors and AIDS Victims. We've been doing this for the past 17 years. Please, more hands on deck. You need to talk about safeguarding you need to talk about child protection it's not just to put yourselves together and call yourselves all manners of names and it's time for funding and you go looking for funds please do what you say and say what you do schools alone cannot also do it 
Churches alone cannot do it. Mosques alone cannot do it. Everybody must do it. And take responsibility, please. You know your limits. You know where to meet the adults. You know how to go about it. Leave our children to be children. Be child appropriate. You know exactly what to do. So talking about safeguarding, I'm saying that this particular session, as we have resumed this session, because everything we did from um, vacation to resumption, this session, no, have been, every single thing we did, you know, has been on activities to keep our children safe. On child protection, we did activities to keep our children safe during vacation. Now the children have been released to you in school. They have resumed. They get in as early as 7 o'clock. They don't leave until 5 p.m. That's how many hours with you? Eight hours or more. By the time they get back home, they eat, they are tired, they go to bed. The next morning, the race, be the race begins. So play your part. You're being paid your salaries. You have accepted the salary as small or as big as it is. But it is even a calling now. It's not that you're going to just work for the end your salary. You're going to do go a step ahead as an, as an adult, as a, you know, a caregiver, as a father, a mother, as a teacher, as a big brother, a big sister, you have to watch out for some of these inappropriate attitudes, even in the children, because they also abuse themselves. They may not know. Habits, some of them are sucking and touching that part, and some of them are doing this and doing that. They are watching your television. You don't have parental guardian. You're on, your, on the phones. You do not control. You're, you, you're not careful enough not to expose them. You may say, but it's not me. They took the phone and they started using it. When you're giving them the phone, then you must know that you put those controls that the phone should have. When you're giving them your iPad, you're giving them the, the um, tablets to do their assignments or your laptops, you have to be careful because the teachers will definitely send them to go online. Yes, that's where the world is going now. So you don't say, but it's the school sending them to, to that's why I gave them my phone. Please do your part at home. And if you're giving them phones in case um, they close and there's something, it should be just for text messages, phone call, text messages. Because some parents respect some of these rules and some parents don't just care. So, and those parents who do not care now make the careful parents to begin to reap some bitter fruits. And that is not good at all. Some schools go all the hog to make sure that these children are protected. Some schools don't care. And when the children mingle, they begin to teach these other children the mess they do in school. And this other school gets polluted. Is it fair? Play your part. And I play my part. Radio Maria is playing her part already. We're talking about it. Madam Momo is playing her part. I am talking about it. What about you? Are you coming on board to say, I stand against child abuse? I stand with safeguarding. Is that what you are accepting today? I am sure you're telling me yes. And you're going to be a great citizen. And God is going to bless you wonderfully for helping us mold our children right and get the best out of them. Because in Nigeria, we are so endowed. We are blessed. Our children are wonderful. They reign. They rule and they dominate. Thank you for tuning in to Child Protection. It's every Tuesday and Thursday, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Make sure you tell somebody about it. Get parents to know about it. Get school, uh, school heads to know about it. Teachers, listen to Child Protection on Radio Maria. We are online, we're on YouTube. We are there for you to ensure that you always get the best. Thank you so much. Expecting you by the next program. Bye-bye.